Welcome to fucking more unsolicited <laughs> white guy opinions on movies, you motherfucking cockney piece of fucking <laughs> shit. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the British takeover of this podcast. I'm Gary Oldman, and one day I'll play Winston Churchill and win a fucking Oscar for uh-huh. it, but for now you got me as Sid Vicious. Welcome, anyway, welcome back to more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies, or for short, one and a half white guys. I'm Nathan, your half-white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, and most importantly, talking a British accent to intro a movie that is near and dear to my heart, but also equally as repulsive to me. We are discussing Sid and Nancy. That's right. That's the biopic of Sid Vicious out of the Sex Pistols. Sid and Nancy, released in 1986, directed by Alex Cox. Starring Gary Oldman as Sid Vicious, Chloe Webb as Nancy Spungen, and Andrew Schofield as John Lydon, a.k.a. Johnny Rotten. But a more important fact, Nick, I think you can appreciate this, is Roger Deakins is the director of photography for this no movie. No shit. It really is. I actually didn't know. Re- I didn't notice that. That's why it looks really good. It's well shot. At times, like it looks really solid. That's that's awesome. I, I well, really, this movie's beautifully shot, and uh, now now it makes perfect sense that as to why. What I noticed off the bat is it really goes for this kind of fly on the wall aesthetic. You're really just kind of there with everybody when yeah. they're like fighting with each other, when they're yelling at each other. You're just kind of in between characters as they're getting into it, whether it's a confrontation, whether it's a love scene, whether it's like them just strung out in like uh, one of those dark, dingy like hotel rooms they're in or something like that you you, you're really kind of there with them and um this movie's done this is one of the movies that does that the best i think you're really kind of sitting there like laying there with them as 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 um these people are just kind of degenerating is a is deteriorating 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 is is in my notes is a good is a good word because this movie is about one thing and one thing only love that's right this is a beautiful love story between two promising young individuals. This is a love story. Uh, take that other word out. And yeah, this is a love story. This is a beautiful love story. Yeah, I don't know about that word. This is, no, 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 you don't understand. This is about a love story oh. about both of them loving heroin. <laughs> Uh, and what's even sadder is these two people are were real. Nick, would you like to get into the IMDb summary? I would. The IMDb summary states... The relationship between Sid Vicious, basis for British punk group Sex Pistols, and his girlfriend Nancy Spungen is portrayed. That's it. Yeah. That's the entire entire IMDb summary, and I would argue, pretty good one. It's just the movie. Yeah, the movie's heavy on plot. It's light on story, I think. It really is just kind of, it goes through the years of seeing their decline from, you know. First meeting. First meeting. And that's that's one of the things I actually like is that when they first meet, they don't like straight up fall for each other. They just it just ha- it just shows the moments where they were together. So past experiences with Sid and Nancy. Um, so yours was just yesterday. Literally. Literally. I, yesterday. I've heard of this movie. I had heard of this movie. Definitely. I'd heard of this movie. I read a really good review of it when I was younger. I, I knew it was well received film. I, it was it was it was kind of an indie darling. Um, I, I always figured but I always figured it'd be a stone cold bummer, you know? So I just kind of, and those kinds of movies I usually stay away with unless I really have a reason to watch them. Like me requesting it for the podcast. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good reason. Fuck. I never really knew who the sex pistols were honestly, until I met you. I just, I, I, that's why I'm most interested to hear, hear your take on this movie. This, this movie's much closer to you than it is to me. But last night was the first time I watched it. And I'll tell you how I got to watch it. I couldn't find this fucking movie anywhere. I had to create an account with Indie Flicks. <laughs> Indie Flicks. And I had to start a seven day free trial to put my card in and everything. You fuck to watch this goddamn movie. I admire your dedication to this podcast and the art at which we are trying to create for all the, 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 the loyal li- 12 listeners out there. <laughs> 12. Which are all related to us. <laughs> Cut that in half and we'll give you, and six. that's lucky for us. The six listeners that we have out there, I admire your dedication for them. Anywho, I, yeah, wh- when did you first see this? If you spent a lot of time within the, the punk scene, listening to the music, kind of going to shows and stuff, I think you end up with like, I think I've talked to you about this before, um, you end up getting like a required viewing list 
for being, being kind of inducted into for, that community. For being the scene, like things you need to see. And there's like, you know, there's stuff on there that I actually showed you, like Decline of Western Civilization. So you get brought up into like Sid and Nancy. Eventually you need to watch it. I feel like growing. I, I don't think I've, uh, I've been around uh, a punk or at least an older punk who hasn't seen Sid and Nancy. When did you first watch it? It must have been maybe my senior year of high school. I was still a kid at that point and needed, you know, to kind of learn more about the history of things. And the Sex Pistols themselves are actually really divisive within the punk community. They I've older, heard that. Yeah. The older punks really love them and respect them for what they are and like what they started. Yeah. With. Like they, they, they're held up as like these pedestal as these gods along with like the Ramones and MC5 and other bands like that. But a lot of the modern punks kind of look at them as like the boy band of punk. Sid Vicious is best worst bassist that has ever played in the punk scene. This guy somehow elevated himself to stardom level within the punk community, and he sucks at bass. He's not good, which is not a bad thing because a lot of punk bands do that where they start and they're not good. So they play loud and they just have to learn to do it. But the thing is, eventually you get better at your instrument just by doing it so much. He didn't. (laughs) <laughs> and it's 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 oh, just oh gee, I wonder it's why it's so bad uh, he was distracted with other things Sid Vicious himself is a divisive character on top of that because he liked to wear like a swastika shirt and stuff like that in this movie they change it to a to a co- communist uh, yes yes, yes. Okay, a, ham- a, hammer, a hammer and sickle in the real one it's a swastika uh, the thing with punk is because it's just like a counterculture it's like a kind of subversive movement it it attracts a lot of fringe people and a lot of those fringe people come from all walks of life And that includes people that feel like they're not accepted because of maybe their sexual orientation or something like that or their ethnicity or anything particularly. But also a lot of people that feel like they're disenfranchised because of certain ethnic groups taking away things from them. So it ends up with a lot of racists in the punk scene and Nazis, unfortunately. So because of that, dead Kennedys have a song about that. Yeah, they do. Uh, Which is a great song. I've seen seen green room. (laughs) They had some good songs. I enjoy them. I enjoy some of their songs. Uh, Sid Vicious was probably one of the worst. uh, It's just not a good person. Uh, on top of that, he's not. Oh a, no, he's not, not a good. From, not he's watching, a, he's watching a, this movie, going like, how he's much not a good of this person. is true? But like, Jesus, he's Christ. not a fucking. Sid Vicious was not a good person. I want to talk to you about how Sid Vicious was out punked by another notable punk singer in the late seventies in England, who was in the same recording studio. He's a little line, little known guy named Freddie Mercury. <laughs> they were recording. Uh, albums in the same studio. I think they were. They're all recording, and Sid Vicious is there with the Sex Pistols, and came into the room they were um, listening to playback in Queen, and I think he said something like, "Have you succeeded in bringing ballet to the masses?" Because Freddie said he wanted to do that, and he's like, "Have you started bringing ballet to the masses? You, you bell end, you bumder, some, some, some kind of derogatory, homophobic slur." And Freddie stood up and walked over. And just like got close and just pushed him out of the room and said, what, who are you supposed to be? Aren't you like Sammy ferocious or something? Get out of here. And it's like, he's like, I'm Sid Vish. It's like Sammy ferocious and just shut the door. On him and, left. and I was like, that's a true punk. That's a good fact. That's a true punk. That's a, that's a, that's a true punk. Freddie Mercury throwing Sid vicious out of a room. And uh, a lot of Queen, Queen, uh, I think it's like Brian May backed it up. He's like, yeah, that shit happened. <laughs> like he threw out <laughs> Sid Vicious. Don't fuck Sid Vicious. Anyway, yeah, he, really, he, was a, he was a dick, <laughs> he but was I was like, it's kind really of a terrible funny. Person. And, and then Freddie, in his most elegant way, sat back down. I was like, continue the rec- continue the playback. <laughs> this movie to be taken seriously within the punk scene just because of how well it's done. It feels very authentic to what that early type of degenerate don't really give a fuck attitude in the first scene. I was, I was kind of like, that's, that's what I mean about the fly on the wall thing. I felt like I was there with them. Like the whole atmosphere, the sound, the production design, like the, the extras doing everything. Like even, I, they're probably not even extras. They're probably like real punks just like going, going insane. Yeah. At the bar scene, I was, I was, I was really impressed with that. I was just like, yeah, this is probably what it's like. I, I bet Nathan, I wonder if Nathan would tell me, Tell me otherwise. I don't think he would. Yeah, it's it's actually there's a, there's a funny story about that. That's actually not in the facts section. So a lot of the extras are actually punks. They brought in punks to to be the extras at the at the shows and stuff like yeah. that to, to mosh and stuff. Um, one of the things that punk bands used to do, which they don't really do anymore. If they do, 
usually the band does it to the audience, not that. But punks used to bands they liked, they used to spit on them, which was like a, a thing of good. It was like good. So punks used to, was were spitting all over Gary Oldman and <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> Andy Sheffield. They were like, what the fuck is going on? And they're like, oh yeah, that's just like what they no, no, do. No, no, no. It's a sign of respect. It's a sign of respect. See, nowadays COVID, no way. Like absolutely not. You um, can't, man. Uh, yeah, so with Sid and Nancy, uh, what it is, it has solid acting, it has great camera work, and for what it is, as low budget as it is, it's it stood the test of time, and I think it'll always hold within the punk community for for that reason, regardless it's of a what... Period, it's a period piece. Yeah, regardless of what you think of the Sex Pistols, or Sid Vicious, or Nancy Spongeon. The, the, they're barely performances, it really feels like you're kind of watching like these these real people. There's barely a difference between this and that documentary. Everything is so spot on. These 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 poor fuckers are just really just kind of created their own hells and they're just living in them. And the whole fuck everything lifestyle is just so prevalent in every line of dialogue from them. Even if it's just not like it's not even if there's just not like monologues or anything. The way they play off of each other, Chloe Webb and Gary Oldman, is just it's phenomenal. Their chemistry, even though it's just claws on a chalkboard a lot of the time, like figuratively and literally, figuratively and literally, they just. They play off each other perfectly. They do really well. You know, originally for uh, the part of Nancy Spongeon, they were looking at Courtney Love wanted to play that. Courtney Love is in this. Uh, she is in this. She she was given a separate role. And this is in the fact section, so we don't have to. But it was it's like, yeah, she was like, oh, I want to play Nancy. And I was like, do not let <laughs> Courtney Love play. Um, do you want to just talk about the basic plot A to B of the movie? Yeah, it's it's. I was going to say it's very light on story, but heavy on plot because it really just kind of chronicles their relationship from when they first meet to um, how she dies, basically. Yeah. And that's not a spoiler. You can look this up like this is a historical event that's that's well documented. You There's it opens with what you assume is her body getting wheeled out by the coroner. Yeah, it, it starts. Sid Vicious it starts getting, at the beginning. And Sid Vicious getting arrested out of the Chelsea Hotel. Yeah, you, you want to know a fun fact? Okay, so so you know how it like, you know, has that opening uh, thing. It's like, shit, you know, Nancy dies at the end of 1970. Yeah, who called 911? Yeah, who, who called, called 911? Okay, how far away do you feel like... I do want to know this. How how far away do you feel like it is that they cut back to? Like, how much in the past do you feel like that is? See, I I thought this was... I thought the movie ended up in like the early 80s, I want to say. And okay. so I was thinking maybe, okay, maybe it started in the late 70s. So the but movie, then you told me Sid Vicious died in 79, Nancy Spungen died in 78. And I'm 78, like, yeah. Okay, well, maybe it was a few years, but now you're making me think it wasn't. Would, would it surprise you if I told you it was a year? A fucking year. A single year. A year. What? Live fast, die young, bro. <laughs> well, okay, so they met at Linda's a year from when... He, they she got stabbed i you know it, or about a year the characters of linda like all that stuff is there's liberties taken with it but yeah it's it's pretty much like essentially they met a year from maybe a year a little over a year to where she died at the end of the movie that's like crazy like it's 77 sometime that's when Sid so they came go on into tour, the so, they go, pistols. so they went on tour pretty not not long after not they long were, not, not long, long after they met not long uh i mean he he you know did you know did the the, the shows with them in london nearby and then they were gonna go like on an international tour to america and then that was when by the way that manager of theirs like at the beginning like it's it's pretty fucked up how he basically encourages sid's fucked up behavior and, yeah like, sid just using and abusing and whatnot is just like he's the face of the sex pistol i'm like oh okay yeah where he's <laughs> we got fucking enablers here man. <laughs> yeah where they're trying to get the you know trying to get them to be you know essentially what they people view punk to be that type of don't give a fuck everything attitude and that don't give a fuck attitude applies they take it seriously where it applies to not only do i not give a fuck about society and the current system and things like that but i don't give a fuck about people and that includes people i might care about as well and they you know where i live people what who I are do, close to me people who would care about me and so if you live that life it ends up you just a path of complete self-destruction so they're wheeling nancy sponging's body out they uh Sid gets arrested and then it this cuts is the back. beginning of the movie this is the cold yeah. open and it cuts back to one year prior where sid vicious and it, john lydon it straight up doesn't tell you if it's one year. It does not put years. It doesn't right? tell you, but it's about a year, year, year and a half at most. That's uh, why this is so shocking to me. Where it cuts back to John Lydon and Sid Vicious 
um, smashing up a a Rolls Royce, I think, and trying to get a dog out of it that's in the Rolls Royce in London. No, and, he's just trying to tag it. Oh yeah, and then he's and then John's just like tag the dog, and Sid's like, nah. Yeah, so he loves animals. That's good. They go to uh, Linda's. Linda. Linda, <laughs> played by Anne Lampton. Uh, Linda is uh, Linda's a. A dominatrix, I believe. Yeah, like a professional, a professional dom. sex dominatrix. And yeah. and uh, that's how she Nancy, earns her money. Nancy works for her, right? I don't know. If she, she ends up working for her. She, later ends, in the movie. she ends up working for her later in the movie. I don't know if she works for her at the time. I think she's just selling drugs at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, Chloe, <laughs> so Chloe Webb's character, Nancy Spungen, is hanging out there. Um, yes. And goes up and greets, and then, and greets then, them with the wrong name. Yeah. Johnny Rotten and Sid Vicious go up there to just. Uh, I guess just shoot up with them, right? Uh, no, eat beans. Eat beans. He eat be- he hangs out and eats beans. And if he, what's really funny is they're walking up the stairs. He's just tagging everything. He's tagging in things. This building too. And he's tagging things. And Gary Oldman, Sid Vicious, is trying to learn the words to a Sex Pistols song. And it's the same song <laughs> that he keeps trying to learn throughout the movie. And I know what song it is. It's pretty vacant off of their uh, Never Mind the Bollocks album. He keeps saying, and we don't fucking care. And then John Lydon's like, no, no, no. It's just we don't care. Not we don't fucking care. It's like, you don't need that. And so he's trying to learn the words, which is acceptable at the beginning of the movie. But then halfway through, he's still trying to learn the words to that song. (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, it establishes he can't even he can't even read because he asks like he asks John at one point. He's just like. How do you spell holiday? And John's like S H I T, which is another really fun scene. Not not only he might be I don't know how much his reading level is at, but uh, he he can't he can't memorize the words. I'll tell you that. What I really enjoyed is that they don't just they don't make this melodramatic because they don't just click as soon as they see each other as soon as they meet. It, it's kind of a grad they they gradually over time connect to one another. They, Sid cause, and Nancy because yeah. they end up bringing what they end up doing is bringing the worst out of each other really because they, they and they call it love because they just have the same vices essentially. And it really then, is. And, but I do like that every scene at the beginning of this movie, they are both in, but it's only when they happen to be in the room together, even if they don't interact with one another. And I yeah. like that. I like that. It, it is showing it's chronicling when both of these two happen to be near each other. So they're at Linda's and it's confirmed that Sid has now been, inducted as the bassist of the sex pistols and they're gonna play because he's because he's john's friend he's right? john's friend he's, he's like i said he can't, like i said before he can't really play the bass he's not good at it but they confirmed they're gonna play some shows and nancy says she's going to go so she can see if they are really as bad as everyone says that is the line in the sh- in the movie <laughs> <laughs> are you as bad as everyone says they continue to play sid doesn't learn the lyrics or he, he doesn't learn a thing. He doesn't learn dude. a thing. And eventually he and the Nancy, most he does in that first gig is like beat someone up. Oh yeah. He beats someone his, up with his own guitar. Yeah, He starts swinging the bass at him. They continue to grow. The sex pistols notoriety continues to grow. And eventually Sid and Nancy develop a consistent relationship based upon nothing else. A really fucked up codependency. Yeah. Yeah. A really fucked up codependency ba- built upon nothing else by, but their own vices and self-destruction. Yep. It just goes full force when she goes to meet him in New York. Goes full force. Or San Francisco. Where is he when he gets fucked up? Um, I think she meets him in New York, but she, she meets him in New York, but right. he flies out uh, after the sex pistols break up. Yeah. They say they land in LaGuardia because he had like a seizure on the plane. Oh, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, well, he just took all the pills Yeah, <laughs> with a giant martini. You're the something. giant martini. I think it was like Scott. No, it was like cognac too. It was like really nice oh, alcohol. And he's like, thank you. And just fucking chugs it. Looking like next thing you see is him being wheeled in. The hospital. Yeah. <laughs> he's watching night of the living dead on the TV. He is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's really good. <laughs> Overall, I mean, we don't need to go too much into like the rest of the plot, but all you need to know is Sid Vicious becomes the basis of the Sex Pistols. He meets Nancy. They develop a codependency. The Sex Pistols grow. Eventually, they break up, and you get to watch the spiral of Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen toward their own sad demise. Some of it is real. Some of it is not, obviously, because it's a biopic. It can't be. Not everything can be true. At least the progress of Sid Vicious leaving, you know, the band breaking up. Sid Vicious trying to start his solo own, career. Solo career. He he does a cover of um, Frank Sinatra's "My Way," 
which I think you heard saw in the movie as well, where he pulls out a gun in the video and starts shooting everyone. Yes. Yeah. So th- if you remember, that cover is actually played at the end of Goodfellas. The Sid Vicious one? The Sid Vicious one. No shit. Because, you know, it's like the opposite of like Frank Sinatra's one is grandiose and it's like I've done so well and I've lived a beautiful life and now I bow out with grace. But Sid Vicious singing that is more like I live fast, died young, and I don't give a fuck. It, spe- it, it, it speaks of deterioration and, you know, denigration. Especially, especially in the way he sings it. Yeah. Which is just, it he's, seems, he's not a singer. Yeah. And, and so, <laughs> so, you know, in Goodfellas, it ends with this type of living the high life. And then just like everything that comes with, you know, crime movies, like eventually come up and comes for you. You know, you have to pay for your sins. And that's what happens to Henry Hill, you know, at least by the end of, you know, Goodfellas. Ray Liotta's character in that. So that's why that's like a more fitting version. In true Sid Vicious fashion, he changes a lot of the the lyrics. Um, I think he changes one of them from the end is near to I'm not a queer, um, <laughs> which is uh, not good in the modern day. And then I think he changed another one to I've killed a cat. Yeah, Dude, to be honest, thing. I was waiting for that cat to like, know, die horribly I know, somehow. I know, especially when they set the apartment on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, and then the guy just moves them to another room. It's like, why not just kick them out? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, you can't do this. Anyway, here's another room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no TV. There's no TV. Yeah, where am I supposed to watch Night of the Living Dead on? Or cartoons after I've stabbed the love of my life. <laughs> yeah, stabbed the girlfriend. Intentionally the or girlfriend unintentionally. In the, in the gut. The, the line I kind of gave to you in the, in the beginning that ever feel like you've been cheated, that was said at the Sex Pistols last show, which they show in the movie. Is that the last show? Yeah. Because yeah. they like break up after Sid just eats shit through like a window. Yeah. Well, and they, were, then they like, were already breaking up. Yeah. Okay. And and I do like that. Not everything is like dwelled upon. Like they don't take like a long time to like establish scenes or establish what's going on between the band. It is just kind of like, Here's these little bits. Here's all you need to know. Okay, moving on. He's shooting up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really moves fast. Um, so it's very well paced. It's well paced. Uh, so that was set at their last show in '78. I don't remember what time in '78. It must have been like early, early '78. That was said. You ever feel like Johnny Rotten? John Lydon said, "You ever feel like you've been cheated to the audience?" And that was done at their last show, and that was at Winterland. And a funny, fun fact about that. Winterland? Winterland. It's a venue that used to exist in the Fillmore area of San Francisco. I was going to ask. It's from there. It's that insane. one shot. They're driving it's on the San Mateo Bridge in that one shot, yeah, aren't they? It, I think it might be the old. Is it the old Bay Bridge that they're doing it over on that? I swear they're de- they, when it he's in be. the taxi cab with that one gal. Oh yeah, it and might she be. says you're like a free agent now. Yeah, it might be a San Mateo Bridge. I, that was I, the San Mateo. I saw it. And I was it's like, San Francisco. That's yeah. the San Mateo so, Bridge. So they their last show was in San Francisco. I mean, I should have fi- I, I should have figured that, but like, okay, but that's real. Yeah, Winterland. I actually went to where it used to stand just to because I was in the area, and it's a bunch of apartments now. Uh, it used to be an ice skating rink that you know in the in the early uh, 1900s that then got turned into a venue. Um, Winterland held a lot of shows, uh, major shows. I think the Avengers, which was San Francisco based punk band that's still around, played there. Um, a bunch of other groups came through and played there. But yeah, it's like an important piece of San Francisco uh, punk history that Sex Pistols played their last show at Winterland. Yeah, that is so fucked up at the end of the movie when he just gets out on bail. Like, how does he get on bail? His mom bails him out. Yeah, he bails him out. He was. You gonna, never see his mom. Yeah, you never. You never see. You his never parents. meet the mom character. Um, um, but then, like, she what is was. He? She was involved in the making of the movie, though. She no actually. Shit. Yeah, she talked to Gary Oldman. Apparently, at first she was like, kind no, of a- no, no, no. It. But then, kind of like, was like, yeah, you know what? Like, why not? Gary Oldman actually wears Sid Vicious's actual chain, his his necklace in the movie. Yeah, that's, that's his. No way. Yeah, that's his. Um, Nancy Sponge's parents wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah, so he wore his actual chain while he was playing Sid Vicious. Um, but that part is so chilling when, like, he doesn't even... I don't think he even realizes what, what has happened, basically, because he's, like, he's going through withdrawals in the jail cell, and then he gets bailed out, and the first thing, and the only thing he says is, where can I get a pizza? Where can I get a pizza from a shitty 
like a shack of a pizza joint. I thought that was all a dream sequence too. Could absolutely be. Like, could absolutely like, be. Because I was just like, because I was just like, did he just die in that jail cell and this is all in his head? Could be. Because that cab rolls up well, out of nowhere. I can Nancy's guarantee that back. he didn't die in the jail cell in real life, but at least yeah, in the I movie, he could have absolutely. Did he die in New York? Yes. Did he stay in New York and he yes. died there? He died of a heroin overdose. And in the, in I, the same I, hotel? I think so. And I, many people argue that it was intentional. He took dirty water with heroin. It's hard to tell. You don't know this. It's hard to tell. No one will ever know this. No one's ever going to know why somebody does something like that. That's the creepy part. Very, yeah. So, because he's going to be prosecuted already for the the murder. I mean, I I don't know who else it could be. (laughs) 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 Like, that's that's it. You're the only one that could have possibly done it. There's blood everywhere, including all over your hands, because you went over and were like, oh, my God. And then. I didn't call the police about it because yeah, it's, it's a very straightforward plot, and you know we, there's really no need to like go into it in depth. I feel like because we've done that enough. Yeah, I'd say let's move on. Nick, do you would you uh, do you want to do the facts section? I do. These are real facts about the movie that I have looked up and added a little bit of humor to. Nick has never seen these before, but he is going to read them live for you right now. Fact number one. Sid and Nancy was released on November 7th, 1986. I could not find any info on how much it made opening weekend, but it earned a total of $2.2 million while in theaters. Its competition in the fall and winter of 1986-1987 included Crocodile Dundee starring Paul Hogan, Platoon starring the Green Goblin himself, Willem Dafoe, and Top Gun starring homoerotic undertones. Homoerotic undertones are the real star of uh, of Top Gun. It actually so it got produced for a little over six million. So it bombed in the box office while it was technically, there. technically, yes. technically. Got very good reviews much, back then, though. Much like, better. It, it got decent reviews. Ebert, Ebert gave it a really glowing review. It, it has, and it's also been accepted into like the British historical preservation of film. Do you like to take a guess? at what the top movies for 86 might have been 86 shit um cobra <laughs> no uh, believe it or not it raw the, deal with Arnold. no but no, i will tell you i'm that, trying to think about it. those are the only i will tell you that <laughs> one and two is top gun the second one is crocodile dundee crocodile dundee is the second highest grossing movie of 1986 oh yeah i knew that it was a hit dude paul hogan because of that movie, he went on to host the Oscars. That's how popular it was. Yeah. And the third most popular movie in 1986 was Karate Kid Part 2. <laughs> where they're in Japan. And he cuts and he's them no, off. And he's no longer a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Ralph Macchio is a man. <laughs> Especially by Part 3, dude. He's like, he's not a kid. He's not a kid. He's like, I'm in high school. <laughs> Fact number two. Gary Oldman has stated in later interviews that he, quote, disliked the script disliked Sid Vicious, and disliked punk music, end quote. But he took the role for the salary offered of 35,000 English pounds sterling. Fucking poser. Fucking posers. <laughs> posers. And really, really channel SLC punk um, Matthew Lillard when you, when you, <laughs> it's the best part. I don't know. Have you seen that one? No, no. We'll yet. talk about that one later. But uh, he's just like fucking posers. They're just posers. Like, it's just all it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> But this this movie really made Gary Oldman like more of a household name. He started getting more roles after this. Didn't this get him like Lee Harvey Oswald in JFK? Yes. It, yeah. Th- yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is believed that this is what it did. Um, I'm, I can't say for sure, but this this definitely helped his career because, I mean, like I said, it, this movie for being a biopic, they do really well. Like the, he does really well as, as Sid Vicious. Does he look like him? Sort of not really. That's how I describe it. Kind of fact number three. Director and writer Alex Cox originally titled the movie Love Kills, but was told near the end of post-production by the studio's legal team that a different party already owned the rights to the name. He then changed it to Sid and Nancy. Although unhappy with the change, Cox does like the title the film was released under in Mexico. Two Lives Destroyed by Drugs, which I have to admit is pretty catchy. Is that real? Yeah, it's real. (laughs) (laughs) In, in, in Mexico. <laughs> in Mexico. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry. I had to, I had to look it up after I found the fact out. I went looking for it. Yeah, on when it was released in Mexico, it was released under the title Two Lives Destroyed by Drugs," which is pretty. You know what? Pretty direct. It's all. It's just as direct as that IMDb summary. Fact number four. In the film, the character of John Lydon says that the original bassist for the Sex Pistols, Glenn Matlock, was let go because he, quote, washed his feet too much. This is actually true and revealed in a later documentary that Matlock was let go because he bathed regularly on tour. Getting kicked out of a punk band because you're too clean? Fucking poser. Fucking poser. <laughs> Do all of these end with fucking poser? Not all of them are fuck end with fucking poser, but... <laughs> Yes, they do. The last one does, too. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, oh, you cheated. Don't look at it. Poser is the most real insult another punk can throw at you. It means that you're not really down. So I I like to throw these in for it. Like, you're not real part of it. So I I, I love (laughs) it. I love it. I just love the, the joke. Fact number five. Andrew Schofield's portrayal of John Lydon, a.k.a. Johnny Rotten, was heavily criticized for being inaccurate. Paul Simonon of The Clash was annoyed that Lydon was portrayed, quote, like some sort of fat bean slurping idiot, end quote. Many would argue that portrayal was unfair and not realistic to who he is. However, Nathan has a counter argument in the form of a photo he is pulling up on his phone that I'm going to look at and give a live reaction to right now. Oh, no, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You want to no. describe what's on the, what what Johnny Rotten, this is older Johnny Rotten a few years ago, is wearing and Johnny what he Ro- looks like? Johnny Rotten is a MAGA, dude. Yeah. He's a MAGA supporter. Fuck. Yeah, this is in the UK. Uh, he, do you want to describe how he looks? That? Yeah, he looks a little overweight. <laughs> <laughs> he's, and, got uh, a, he's got a MAGA shirt on, like a red MAGA shirt, just got Damn, what happened to the dude? Man? Well, I mean, listen, as you get older, you know, whatever happens, happens in that particular way. Um, you know, I'm not body shaming. I just thought it was funny that he was like, he betrayed him as a fat bean slurping idiot. And then it's like, oops. <laughs> Oof. uh, <Yeah. laughs> uh So, but yeah, he, uh, he like endorsed Trump on everything. And like, don't get me wrong. There's like an aspect of punk, which is like you know, not with like the mainstream disenfranchised and all that. And so I guess he viewed as like, oh, everyone supports, you know, liberalism. So I guess conservatism is the new punk. It's not. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it never will be. Listen, it's called rage against the machine. You can't rage for the machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's a, it, Jesus Christ, that's a shocker. Yeah, man. it is. It's unfortunate. Um, and that's kind of, you know, why people have issues with the, the sex, sex pistols, pistols nowadays. nowadays. Yeah. Would you say that he, Johnny Rotten, is a fucking poser? Uh, <laughs> it's in bold. It's a fucking poser. That's the title of this episode. <laughs> fucking <it>? poser. <laughs> So Paul Simonon said that about the actor's portrayal. Yeah, when the movie came out. Okay. Which is, you know, 86. Is it? Is it criticized Um, widely by other punk fans? I mean, mean, his portrayal. There's liberties taken with it. There's liberties taken with it for sure. Um, Because he's like really... The performance itself is not not far off from like Sid Vicious and like a, a lot of the other punks portrayed in the movie, except that he's yeah. not shooting up like every five minutes. He's kind of an arsehole, you know. <laughs> an arsehole. Um. So Johnny Rotten and Andrew Schofield met up, and I think Johnny Rotten gave him advice, which was like, you know, like you, this isn't really like how you're portraying it isn't exactly how it was. So you might as well just do it your own way. You know what I mean? And like not stress about whether it's accurate to me or anything like that. Yeah. Paul Simonon is still alive. I thought he was. I just wanted to confirm that. Great bassist. I, I like the clash. He's one of my favorites. What are the couple they always play on the radio? Uh, Lon- uh, London calling is always one. They uh, always play rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. And, um, um, should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? Which is a Netflix fan, uh, a Stranger Things now made famous song, <laughs> remade famous. Well, I feel like it was good. I know I loved it. Was it was always very well. I loved it before. I feel like that was one of their more. That's yeah. one of their more well known. ones. Yeah, I have a. I have the. Um, I know. I even know that one from. I think Debbie Thornberry's like rocking out to that in the wild thornberries movie oh, at you're one right. point. <laughs> she might be you know what you know what's really good is i have an original pressing and vinyl of combat rock which it was the one the clash album that um should i stay or should i go comes off of so it's like from that i think it came out in 82 don't quote me on that but shall we move on to the uh what a story mark what a story mark yes 
I'm hoping you'll I'm hoping you like this yeah, one. Yeah, more. your last for the, one. I'd, for those I'd... of you keeping score, I haven't gotten above a three mark uh, minimum here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing well. I'm, I'm averaging about three marks to two and a half to two each each time. So I'm hoping Nick will appreciate this one. All right. All right. Nathan has found probably the most. How would you call this? The I most, would just the call most, it the most bonkers fact. I would about just the call movie. it the most bonkers fact that I think you'll appreciate about that. The I'll movie. appreciate this is all for me. So yeah, it should yeah, be this what one's a, for you. So there, it should be what a story, Nick. What That's, a story, Nick is a better why do you, one. Why do you think? Why do you think I I haven't liked these so far? I'm I, not. My name is not Mark. You, Nick, you, Nick, you, you, you Nick, fuck. Nick, Nick is a, a, a <laughs> narcissist. <laughs> I'll put you in a hospital, <laughs> Guerrero Street. Guerrero Street. <laughs> Here is the what a story, Mark, for Sid and Nancy. Did you know all five members of Guns N' Roses can be seen as background actors in one of the club scenes? In his autobiography, Slash said that all of them had been scouted and given roles by the casting director without each other's knowledge. Which must have made it surprising when they said they couldn't make it to band practice because they had a thing to do. But then all showed up separately to the film set. (laughs) This is kind of like when I... Nathan told my boss I couldn't make it into work because I had an important errand to run. But then he walked into the bar I was day drinking in 30 minutes later. <laughs> Are you serious? Hey, Dick. Are you serious? <laughs> There's once like that. Is this yeah. one of your coaches? No, no, this is a little bit ago. Um, this is a different job, but he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I can't make it. And then he walked into a bar I was in and I was like, you're fired. Well, what I wanted to say was, hey, this looks bad for both of us. <laughs> Like <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's my Guns and Roses, right? G and F and yeah, R. So man. they're that's all cool. they're all in. I think I think they're in the first one when he like punches the uh the guy. All five of them. I think yeah, they're all in. They're all in it. Um, they're that in is one. Cool. Um, Slash was in. I think one or two. They just reused him. They stayed for like okay. So so no no. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm th- I'm remembering that wrong. It was one club scene, but only Slash stayed for like all three days of shooting for it. They were just like you know. Uh, the other the other four drop I, so axel rose dropped i don't know the other uh, three members names I, <laughs> I just know slash and axel rose so axel rose is in there um and slash is in there yeah and they're all in the same one but i just find it really funny that, that all, is cool they all showed up and they're like hey what are you doing here <laughs> oh quinky dig <laughs> Well, this looks bad for both of us. No, this looks bad <laughs> for looks both of us. This for all five of us. This doesn't look good. We all miss band practice. So, Nick. To be fair, I, I, I think I was very lenient toward Thor, Love, and Thunder because of the... The amount very, of Guns and Roses. The amount of Guns and Roses in the center. They play, they play Rainbow in the Dark by Dio at the end of the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's actually... That, uh, they that, play it during the credits, but I was like, that... That's really good. That good is, on you for that. That is really interesting. Uh, so is this is a weird bit of history I knew. Did you know the rapper Easy E? Yes, he's an NWA. He said that Guns N' Roses was like his favorite rock band. I think I did not. Know that. That's he, he said cool. that. He said he's like, yeah, I'm really into Guns N' Roses, and I was like, oh, nice. So, how would you, out of one to five marks, Nick? What would you rate this? This fact. This is a cool fact, and it ends on a very funny and true joke. Uh, four out of five. Oh my God, we're at four out of five marks. There you people. go. Yeah. This is this is your best. Congratulations! One so Thank you. You did it. Good job. No Guerrero Street Hospital. <laughs> no Guerrero tonight. Street. All right, for Nick's bit here, uh, this movie did not spawn a franchise, unfortunately. There's no sequels. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why not? Uh. <laughs> 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 the revenge of Sid and Nancy. Oh my god, that would be that would be. First of all, if they turn that into a horror movie where it's like Sid and Nancy come back from the grave and start seeking. First of all, bad taste, bad taste. I feel like it would be maybe not for <laughs> Sid Vicious, but for Nancy's parent, like the family would be like, no. Oh man, yeah. Uh, I, but I wanted to ask you. I wanted to use this opportunity to ask you. What are the other essential uh, movies, movie viewings uh, in the punk community? Um, in, in lieu of a franchise, we'll talk about other punk movies. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I kind of mentioned some decline of Western civilization is kind of like one of the most important. It's a great documentary. And I, I had you watch it on one. Um, I, I remember, right? Yes. Yes, I saw it. Decline of Western civilization is great. Um, Penelope Spheris captures a candid kind of like snapshot in time of punk bands in LA. Who, in, are, the, who are the five? Uh, X so, is the so only one X I is, There's X, there's Germs when Darby Crash was there. The Alice Bag band, Black Flag is also, Black Flag when they had 
I forget his real name, but uh, they named AKA Chavo. Chavo was the lead singer in that one. Ministry Catholic, something called Catholic, Catholic, something. And am I forgetting it? Oh, and fear fear is in there as well. Fear the band. The, the one of the only bands to be turned off of SNL. Oh, I thought that was X. No, no. X, X is the band. X is the band with three, which is John Doe, Billy Zoom and um, fuck what X extra extra. I forget her. The lead singer's name. I extreme extreme. Like I always forget how to pronounce it. But no fear is the band at the end. Oh, where it's what's the fucking lead singer's name? I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose so many points in the punk community for not knowing these offhand. Um, but the we lead, have already been turned off by the, so many people. The lead like, singer, we have been listen. We have listen. been paused. They've closed the browser at this point and they are like unsubscribing. Let me tell you this. Speak. Let me tell you this. The lead singer of fear. OK, is you, want an, to, you want to look it up? Yeah, yeah. Hitting on the lead singer of fear is an actor. He's in Flashdance. Oh shit! Yeah, he is. I just forget his name. Does he play the bucket of water? No, <laughs> no, he plays. I forget who he plays, but he's in Flash Dance. You hear that? Um, sorry, sorry. I- Irene Cara just. Died. Yeah, Irene Cara. That's Irene it. Yeah, Cara I was just, just fucking died, dude. Yeah, yeah. That made me very sad because I love that song. Yeah. Also, Fear, uh, whose lead singer is also an actor, and um, Lee Ving, which I had to look up because I had to remember that. Um, so they're in fucking poser. There, I, I really am. Uh, they're in decline of Western civilization for I think by the time the movie had come out, Darby Crash had already died, which it, Darby Crash is another Sid Vicious character. Well, the the Sid Vicious esque character. The interesting thing, it's called the decline of Western civilization. But it, mm-hmm. it, the kind of cool thing is it's showing each band it shows is just kind of like, here's this really smaller known band. And then by the end of it, you get to X and then fear. And they're the more well known ones like, at the time. Yeah. The, yeah. The more like the the. Nowadays, but, Black Flag's Black Flag's probably the biggest out of all of them. I would really? Say. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd say Black Flag's probably the bigger one that came out of all of it. But at the time, they were smaller. They had already gone through. Uh, God, I'm losing my punk card here. Oh, oh no, it's not Keith Richard. It's Come Keith, it's, Keith Richards. <laughs> so by back that time, Black Flag already passed. I think Keith Morris, Keith Morris, Keith Morris is the guy's name. Uh, went on to found the Circle Jerks. They uh, are man. coming for your card. Right. I, right I am now losing have to all of my up. punk cards right now. <laughs> okay, I am getting I'm going to get my ass beat at the next show. But it's a fantastic um, documentary and just kind of like it's 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 you know, like you said, it's a time capsule into like, really what is. it was back. It's like a it candid came photo. The, came out in the 80s. 80s, like mid 80s or early 80s. Made a decline of Western Civ 2 and 3. 2 is a, like a like a mockumentary. It's called The Metal Years. 3 is really weird because it's like the early 90s now. And it's like the punk. It's like true gutter punks that like kids that just live in like abandoned houses. It's real. It's like a real documentary. It's like kids that live in abandoned houses, you know, are addicted to shit. And then one of them dies in a house fire at the end. And it's like, this is real. This like is it's a documentary. This is a documentary. Jesus it's Christ. really brutal. So that's one. That's a highly recommendable one. But what are some other ones? Suburbia. So Penelope Spheres did Suburbia. A bunch of the um kids that she interviewed for like that were punk fans. She cast in this movie called Suburbia, which is about punks in L.A. as well. Kind of like living on the outside and degeneration and, you know, has it has a similar tone of it's like it's much more somber. Besides that, obviously, Green Room, which you've seen, uh, is kind of the new, like, good horror movie punk one where, you know. It's a hell of a thriller. It is. I like, um, I like quoting Patrick Stewart in that. It's oh. like, what do you think? I think they're a lot smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it's one of, you know, one of Anton. Yuck. Fuck you, Logan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Anton Yelkin's one of his, and, one of his uh, last, last movies. Films, dude. Um, yeah. uh, rest last in movies, peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. He's in that. Imogen Poots is in. Imogen it. Poots is in that one as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, would go on to be in Black Christmas. Black Christmas 2019, <laughs> which we may discuss in a future episode. <laughs> we have our own reasons for being annoyed. Yeah, at we that. should just talk about all for, three of them. No, God. <laughs> SLC Punk is is a good like uh with matthew lillard with matthew lillard is a good uh reflection on the punk genre let's give a shout out to matthew lillard too Uh, you 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 are awesome he plays he plays a punk and i think the funniest line he has there where he talk he's like talking to the camera and it's like the start of the movie and he's like hanging out in the mall he's like a mall punk at at the start of the movie and he goes everyone you know it's like those people that love punk but they're just posers like You'll have them and you'll see them and they'll say something like, and then it's like a punk going down the escalator and it cuts to them and they're like anarchy in the UK. And that's like that as he flips off the camera, which is a Sex Pistols song. He goes, "What the fuck do they know about being in the UK? This is Salt Lake City. They don't know shit." 
fucking poser. <laughs> it's just like it's like those people just saying key words. It's like it's like the whole movie is like candid snapshot into a punk that's stuck in a city which is very kind of isolated from like the major hubs of punk which is like New York, um DC, uh San Francisco, LA. So uh, very relatable for a lot. Yeah. Uh, have you met? Have you met many posers? <laughs> Define, what are, what are oh posers God. in your you, opinion? Let me ask you this. Define poser. <laughs> I, like that's the thing. Poser, poser, like I like I we made a joke about it in the in the fact section, but posers pose. thrown around so many fucking times in there. I don't even know someone, what someone who wants to talk about like what movies to recommend, but they can't even remember who's in the movies. I, 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 I mean, that's me. <laughs> <What? laughs> so, so I'm a poser by Fucker. that definition. <laughs> listen, 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 what punk is especially now has become so debated and so argumentative within the community that they're in punk groups on facebook we just post memes about is this punk question mark and it's just like (laughs) it'll be like a cop it'll be like a dog biting a cop and it's like is this punk and the answer to that one is yes but then like uh, sorry having your dog dressed up in a cop outfit for halloween not punk very a cab um (laughs) but uh like that so so the 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 whole idea of calling someone a poser or you're not punk or anything it doesn't even fucking mean anything anymore just it's just thrown around for no particular reason one of the most poser things about me is i i choose to live indoors that's what makes me a poser in the punk community (laughs) if i was really down i'd live outside (laughs) which you'd still be couched which is just homeless (laughs) just being homeless like that that's exactly what it is and i was told essentially i was a poser one time by a bunch of gutter punks that lived outside because i walked into my house and i wouldn't give them a dollar because i didn't have any money at the end of the day i mean i feel like punk really comes down to this um you're upset with the way that things are the status quo and like how the the system keeps you in place and i think what really defines you as more of a poser or really a punk is are you angry at the system and want something better for everyone or are you angry at the system because you feel like you, you feel like you've been cheated and you want something for you and everyone else can get fucked if they get theirs or not? And I would define punk being more in it for the collective of all. And I would define more poser, at least within the community, as being in it for you. But you really like all the the cool like outfits and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, right on. Yeah, that's how I, I would I would define it. I'm very I don't think you are, but I'm very into Rob Zombie. And I wasn't sure he's all right. I yeah, wasn't I sure. I wasn't sure if you knew uh, I maybe you did, but I wasn't sure if you knew he was heavily influenced by punk. Where, yeah. where when he first discovered it, he was just like, I, I genuinely loved this whole fuck everything lifestyle that they were going for. And yeah. the Ramones is like one of his favorite bands of all time. The Ramones, the Ramones have their own style. I really like it. I mean, they put on a good show, at least for other viewings. Like, yeah, SLC Punk, and then finally, but like, Return of the Living Dead is really just like yes. a like like such a stereotype of punks, but it's so good. It's so quality. Like, it's such it's so well written. Such a B horror comedy that we both love. That I showed you that one. I'm, I'm hoping one day we get to reviewing it on this podcast as well. Maybe around all four of that. That's a good one. Um, but you know, those are like some basic ones. And then finally, one I also showed you, of course, I would say, even though this falls more into the Sid and Nancy, we've talked about it a bit. um, If you haven't watched Train Spotting, I feel feel like you need to watch Train Spotting. And, you know, they're not even in like the punk scene as far as music goes, but there's a lot of the aesthetic that's kind of shared with Sid and Nancy. And I love Train Spotting. It's still one of my top five favorite movies. It's like Ewan McGregor, Robert Carlyle, Ewan Bremer, and, uh, um, Johnny Lee Miller, Johnny Lee Miller, and uh, who plays Diane? Um, oh, oh, fuck! Um, uh, she's Kelly uh, McDonald. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly McDonald. Uh, she's so good, and she's also Merida in uh, Brave. You got a chance to change your fate. You change your fate. <laughs> Would you just shoot up or something? <laughs> She doesn't in the movie. That's stupid. That was stupid of she, me. Fuck. She goes. She goes on to. I like Brave. She, I can't goes, believe I said that. She goes on to be a successful fucking lawyer in the second train spotting. She was in. Um, She's Brolin's wife in No Country for Old Men. Yeah. 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 She's also in uh, an episode of Black Mirror. Do you remember that one with the bees? The electronic bees? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. What would you rank this movie out of What would we rank this movie? Um, Like I said, it's not my favorite like punk aesthetic style movie. Uh, But if I had to pick one, I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a 67. 67. 67. That's still pretty low. 
Yeah, it's but for me, it's really high. Remember, remember, I rated uh, I gave uh, what was it um, hard to kill like a 12. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I like Ghost Rider better. Twenty five. <laughs> I was really impressed with this. Um, it's extremely memorable um, and haunting. I'm going to give it a f- 74, 74, 67, 74. Let's see. All right. So that gives Sid and Nancy a 70.5. Not bad. Um, that's not bad. So 70.5 for that. Like, that's not a, a bad one. This is one of the first. This is a legit drama we've done. One of the first legit dramas. Um, I think we can both say. I we mean, would... Ghost Rider is a legit drama. <laughs> but, you know. No, no, <laughs> no. I think we can both say. I think we can both say we recommend watching this movie. It, it's oh, worth watching. Down, yeah. 100%. The characters do well. The act, Oh, sorry. The actors do well. It's well shot. It, if, it feels very authentic. Even if you're not part of the community, it's, it's, it's worth a watch. If you're absolutely, a film, if you're a film lover. All right. One last part. That's the, uh, will I let Nick in the club bit? Oh, hit me with your best shot. Uh, this is the club that, um, all five members of guns and roses are in right now. So you really want to get into this one. This is a pretend club. I'm outside as a pretend bouncer. Nick wants to get in. And I have to ask Nick a piece of film knowledge or a recommendation for a movie. And if I like it, I'll let him in. It's completely arbitrary in my own choice, but he has to choose from a category I give him. I'm ready. Can you name me a movie where our lead character plays a guitar? The Limey. Oh, man, that is a good one. <laughs> I actually don't hate that movie. That's a good movie. It is. He only, does it count? Because he only plays the guitar in flashbacks. It, but it is Terrence um, Stamp playing a guitar. I would count it. If you, if, you, if you see him on screen playing a guitar and doesn't suck, I would count that. Yes, I'm granted entry. Um, By yeah, the way, I'm going to go, have to go ahead and let you in on this one. Good job, Nick. You're welcome to you. the club where all the Guns and Members O's are hanging out. All the gun, all where GNFNR yeah, is, yeah. is hanging out, but, Slash, not, <laughs> but not playing, unfortunately. But not, not, <laughs> welcome to the gym. It's just Axl Rose talking <laughs> in the corner. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, check out Steven Soderbergh's The Limey. It's a really good revenge movie. That is a very solid movie. Thank you for listening to more Unsolicited White Guy Opinions on Movies podcast, a.k.a. One and a Half White Guys. Please remember to follow us, like us, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. And remember to tell a friend to listen to our podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and then we kind of talk about the movie. We talk about we talk about punk movies in the meantime. And Ghost Rider, we talk about Peter Fonda. Of course. Speaking of the limey. Oh, God. No, no, no. We're done. We're done for here. All right. Good. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>We are recording this on December 3rd, by the way. Yeah, it is. 2022. <laughs> is it? Is it? Oh, yeah, it's the 3rd, isn't it? I thought. Yeah. It's Saturday, yes. Uh, it is pouring rain outside.